Keeper's Snowy Day by Mike Inkpen. It was a new morning and it was snowing. Huge cotton wool snowflakes were tumbling past Keeper's window. Yes, said Keeper, jumping out of his breakfast. Yes, yes. He grabbed his scarf and wound it three times round his head. Yes, yes, yes. Keeper was very positive about the snow. Keeper rushed outside. The snow lay deep and smooth and new, like an empty page waiting to be scribbled on. He made a paw print and then another. And then, with a whoop, he went charging round and round, crisscrossing this way and that, until the garden was full of his tracks. Keeper stopped to catch his breeze, letting the swirling snowflakes melt on his tongue. Then he fell backwards into the snow and lay there panting. When he stood up, he found that he had made a perfect keeper-shaped hole. He tried again, then he tried a different shape, and another. I bet Tiger hasn't thought of this, he said, and ran off to find his best friend. Keeper found Tiger at the top of Big Hill. He was wrapping up in a fat bundle of silly woolly clothes. Keeper plopped a friendly snowball on top of his head. Hello, said Tiger. Tiger pointed up at the sky. A watery sun was seeping through the gray clouds. It won't last, he said. It'll all be gone by tomorrow. There is a warm wind coming. Tiger was like that. He knew things. But this was not at all what Keeper wanted to hear. So he started throwing snowballs at his friend. Tiger was very easy to hit because the silly woolly clothes were wrapped so tightly around him that he couldn't hardly move. And his own snowballs stuck like little pom-poms to the silly woolly gloves. Look at my new game, said Keeper falling backward into the snow. You get up very carefully, and there you are. And there he was, or at least the shape of him. Tiger stretched out his arms and fell backward with a soft woolly crump. But when he tried to get up, he could not. He was too round. He just lay there, waving his arms and legs like a beetle on his back. Tiger heaved himself over onto his tummy, but rolled too far and found himself on his back again. He tried again. The same thing happened. Snow began to stick in thick lump to the silly woolly clothes. Crossly, he heaved himself over once more. This time, he rolled over twice, three times, four times. And slowly, at first, and then a little faster, and then a lot faster, and then very fast indeed, he rolled down the hill. And as he went, the silly woolly clothes picked up more and more snow so that by the time he reached the bottom, he had changed from a small dog into a giant snowball. The giant snowball fell to pieces. Keeper charged down the hill. Are you all right, tiger? He panted. 
Tiger pulled off his silly woolly hat. A big grin spread across his face. Again, he said. So that is what they did all day long, taking turns to wear the silly woolly clothes. And by the time the sun began to dip toward the hill, making their shadows long and skinny, they had rolled enough snow to the bottom to build a giant snow dog. They watched their shadows lengthen and fade. It'll all be gone by tomorrow, said Tiger. There's a warm wind coming. But for once Tiger was wrong. The warm wind stayed and that night another snowstorm smoothed out all of Kipper's paw prints, making the garden like a clean white empty page once more. And the snow dog stood at the bottom of Big Hill wearing Tiger's silly woolly clothes for almost three whole weeks. The end.